Now, the next um, story that we want to present to you is a story about one of my students, who you probably all heard about before, students plural, who the only deal they could afford to do when they started was an $88,000 deal in the middle of nowhere, Warburgville. And from there, I want to track their story with you because I think it's a great story to show because they started from very, very meagre beginnings. And now they're doing, you know, multiple blocks of units and all sorts of things. So do we have them both? We do. Let's give Jason and Amy a round of applause. Bring them up. Yeah. We have three of you on stage. <laughs> How are you? Must <laughs> Looking gorgeous. We're going to turn around and do our, our selfie with the crowd first. Our selfie with the crowd. Can we do that? This is a this is an Ellen Jeanette generous. I bought no selfie stick. <laughs> Whatever her name is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now, Jason and Amy, let's talk about when you started with us because. You, the only deal you could afford to do was this really tiny little deal, is that right? Yep. Where is it? That's where we started at. Yep. $30,000 deposit. And now, where we are eight years later, got a uh, multi million dollar portfolio. Okay, well, let's have a look at it. So, you actually had one property when you came and started shooting. Yes, this is pre DB days. And um, it actually wasn't a bad buy because it was like neutral. On mine, so it was probably a bit of an accident, really. It was, yeah. yeah. I need to get rid of that one soon. Yeah. <laughs> but it was okay, it was, it was cash flow neutral. Let's have a look at this $88,000 deal. That was it, huh? It's it's going, going back to that last one, you know, you, you learn how to deal with tenants and stuff, and you had to lift the rent for the tenant, and the tenant had a bit of a complaint. Yeah, that was a big lesson with um, how to deal with your tenants. Don't be friends with them, is the lesson here. Um, I couldn't, I got to know her really well and she just pretty much manipulated me and said, look, you know, I'll pay this rent and I said, oh, okay, yes, my first property is fine. Um, so I had to bring Jason in to negotiate a high rent and Jace, how did you go? Yeah, well, I called her up and said, look, you know, you've been on a pretty great rent because when we started, we thought we'd give her a discount and then um, I said, we're going to have to put it up because we've got to make her pay so we... And she said, like, you can't put the rent up. I've spent a hell of a lot of money just recently. I said, what did you spend all that on? And you can't afford, you know, $50 a week rent. She said, I got your boobs. <laughs> you mean you didn't notice? Well, I wasn't there. She's talking over the phone. I said, Annie, I don't that, believe her. At that point in time, you had to fly up and... and we had to check it. this out. And that was personal. <laughs> There was two good reasons to do that. Well, she, she was a single mother and she needed them as tools to get a partner at the pub she was working at. What? And she invited us to go have a drink there, but we didn't. So. I said to Amy, I'd been filming you at that time, and I said to Amy, didn't we always say something about sight unseen? <laughs> Miranda. Miranda. Let's go on to your very first deal, which was, what, five, six hours drive out of Sydney? Yes, Jason and I were working full time at this stage, um, probably 50, 60 hours a week in our own business and corporate job. And we would drive up over five weekends to Narandra, which is an hour from Wagga Wagga, New South Wales. And basically, you know, Friday afternoon, drive up for five hours, get there at midnight, start renovating first thing on Saturday morning. Mm. Jason did a lot of, you know, the big. Renovation work, yeah. he'll tell you. You were, you were pretty good with the, you know, you'd never done any renovation. You're not a hands on kind of person. I really. said to people at that stage, I haven't even packed a dishwasher. Right. <laughs> that would have been really handy doing renovation then. Yeah. Well, so, I, so, how did you drive up to Miranda? What, did you, what car did you drive? Well, I, my dad had a uh, Commodore station wagon and I had a BMW X5. Right. So we used the BMW or the... Or the, um... the BMW. Right. <laughs> That's really good to go to Miranda and negotiate a nice low price on a property, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we learned that one, did we? We did. We did. Uh, from then on, everyone's going, what happened to the BMW? I'm like, oh, I, I borrowed that from my dad. <laughs> Drove the Commodore down. So this probably the deal was it was an old house that needed renovating and it was on a dual lot already. Yeah, uh, well, it was on an, enough lot that could be subdivided, okay. basically. So this is when we started doing the course and this interview got into our head. 
We had lots of opportunities of properties we could buy, and we thought let's combine some strategies. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you were looking for. You were looking for those kind of strategies, and you kept drawing circles out from where you lived until you could get to where you could afford, mm -hmm. exactly. which was six hours away. Yeah, and the reason that we were in that situation, we both had good jobs, earning good money, but I hadn't done my tax for five years. <laughs> And so getting a loan when you haven't done that was a lot of paperwork. But still, we worked with our, with Clint and said to him, well, we want to start now. Is it, you know, sure, it's going to take six months to do all that, but can I do it now? I said, sure, we can give you 100000 So said, that's enough, let's go and find you. Okay, so that's what you did. Now, um, you need to renovate this place. You've never done any renovation before. They tell me that they that you um, got, you know, you went down to the hardware store to get the supplies and things. And one of the things that needed to happen on this was to actually um, paint the roof. Is that yeah. right? Roof and paint? And, and was that the paintbrush that they, they sold you to paint the roof? The, um, well, the, the two-inch paintbrush? Yeah, well, when I went down there, it was basically walked in the store and so I needed a can of paint to paint the roof and a, um, and a brush, and the guy just points. And so I just walked over there, saw the brush, saw the paint was over there, and didn't know you could get bigger brushes. <laughs> <laughs> so you painted the roof with a two-inch paintbrush? No, one-inch. One inch. <laughs> How far did you get? How long did that roof take you? It was, it was <laughs> Come on, weekend. Can be <laughs> if you go to Google Earth today and have a look, only half the roof is painted. It's not supposed to look there, Ian. And we got to the second, the paint just sets and he fell over and covered in like half the roof from the back. But you can't even see it, so. He poured, he poured it along the ridge line and pushed it into the gutter. The front was <laughs> So we now know about the two-inch paintbrush or the one-inch paintbrush. Yeah, that's we... what I call... What do you call it? Renoing like a, the beast. Like a beast, you reckon? Because <laughs> I was so... You know, it's, when we came out of the course, the ultimate course, like, no looking back, let's do it. No one can tell us anything different. Don't tell any of our friends what we're doing because I think we're crazy. Let's just go do it. So, Ian, you know when we do the slides up for the renovations and things like that, you know, we can't assume that anybody knows anything. All right, you've got to put in there, when you paint a roof, use an Ellis spray gun. Yes. <laughs> and, that, and that's something that, you know, will come with experience. You, we can teach you everything in the world until you actually go out there and experience it. You yeah. Know, it's, it's going to be a fun job for you. <laughs> so here are some slides of that. There's the, um, the, the renovation was obviously done on the initial house. And this was the removal house that you put in. So it was an old place nearby that you were able to move on to the second block. Yeah, mm -hmm. they went to what they call a, uh, it's like a cemetery for old Go houses. graveyard for an ha old yeah. house graveyard, yes. But mm -hmm. at this stage I played paintball and I'd smashed up my leg and I couldn't walk, so. Uh, so Amy painted the next roof. So Amy, <laughs> the roof. <laughs> she had the, it's funny, there's this picture of me there sitting on the, on the porch at the front there and I laid all that grass so I couldn't, Walk, so I just basically rolled. <laughs> oh no. And Amy painted the roof in that. He was in a lot of pain, but you know what? He was committed. He was like, you know what? We've got to finish this job, mm -hmm. get it done. Um, we'll, you know, once we do that, I can rest. So yeah, I was very That's proud of him. Cool. <laughs> okay, so you added value there, obviously, by adding the other house. There's some before and after shots of, uh, of the property. Um, for both houses, so both houses are on there now, and that gave you enough equity then to go on to the next deal. Yeah, it sure did. And also, look, you've got nothing, you, you haven't done your tax returns, you're going to the bank or going to, you know, the broker and they're talking to the banks and there's not much hope for you besides that, you know, 100000 that was it. And then now we go back to the banks, two houses, positive cash flow, um, or we've got the other place as well, and... They're just very impressed. Yeah. But we still need a deposit. The bank's not going to give you a deposit. This gave us a deposit. Mm. So even though it's a cheapy little deal, you had enough in there to get, have the deposit equity in the property. Yeah. You still own the property? Yes. And still positive cash flow? Yes. Yeah. So that gave you enough money then to come back to Sydney where you lived and buy a PPR deal. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the obviously the advantage there is a PPR deal, they're living in the place, they're going they're gonna live somewhere, they're, you know, you might as well be putting it towards your own place. But they've got to create equity. The deal, your PPR deal, must be a deal unto itself, not just a place where you live. So your manufactured strategy on your next one was to actually buy a piece of land mm -hmm. and build a house. Yep. Yep. Uh, this is only 180 square meters, so six meter wide block. 
and it doesn't even look, it had overgrown grass, it didn't even actually look like a block, mm. but this it's was like 2009. <laughs> um, but that's a, typical, that's a typical size block in the area, you know, we, we, own, a we own a 99 square metre block in Sydney, and 180 square metres is quite large, yeah. so, yeah. so um, you know, but it was an empty block, and it was for sale, and no one was buying it. GFC time. And, yeah, yep. so you went off and you did a .pdf search. Yes, yes, yes. So we wanted to find out why didn't anyone want this block of land. And so I went into Google and typed in the address .pdf and suddenly came up with these two rejected DAs. Mm -hmm. So people mm -hmm. have tried to build on it before? Well, people looked and tried to build on it. Tried to build. This is a one-storey street. Mm -hmm. Single story, that's it, the whole street. And this guy wanted to do a two-story with a pool. With a mansion on it. And yeah. And so, but it said rejected, so I think everyone else at that said, well, you can't do that, and it's DA rejected. And then we quickly sat down with our mayor of the council, spoke to several other people, town planners, and they said, Amy was to talk to council, and what do you ask? Them? We actually did a concept sketch up with an architect and said, we just want to build a one story house, two bedrooms, tiny, it looks exactly like the rest of the street, keeping the heritage mm -hmm. scope of it. And he's like, council's like, yep, I don't see why I would reject that. You know, if you put it in. And, but you were pretty clever there because, I mean, we obviously talk a lot about design and things like that. Mm -hmm. And in your design, you had an attic. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> that's an attic. Storage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so what do we have in that attic? It's a large space where, you know, people can hang out and do all sorts of stuff. Well, yeah. What we found out was the easiest way first was to build a house with the attic. Yeah. And then you can get a private certifier to put to certify some yep. stairs and turn it into a bedroom. But the council don't want to start with you like that. Yeah. They said, give us the easiest thing and go do it one afterwards. So and that, there's a lesson in that too. You know, quite often things can be done after the initial approval or the initial build, whatever, and then you can take it to another stage. Quite often if you're going to build, you know, two houses on the one block, you know, you, you can build two houses, uh, but you won't be able to subdivide them. Absolutely not. But once they're there, then you won't be able to subdivide them. And there's things like that that happen all the time. So just because you, you get blocked at one angle doesn't mean there isn't another way of doing things. It's not getting around the laws or whatever. It's just, you know, you've got to do things in certain stages to get certain results. So that's the plastic, great learning. That's the plastic rules we always talk about. So for Joseph and Amy, the attic was built, the stairs were put in, you walked in through the house and had a bedroom, and then you had a wall of gyp rock and and then there was the next bedroom. Once the house was approved, the occupation certificate came through, they went back to a private certifier and said, we'd just like you to do an attic room. The private certifier says, yep, no worries, sign off. They get the chip rock saw in the hallway, they open up the doorway, the stairs are already there, everything's sheeted off, and now you've got a three better. So, and see, the thing, is, sorry, the thing is here, in, in a place like Sydney, big built up areas and things like that, one of the things that is a great uplift in value is taking something from a two to a three or a three or a four, you know, and, and redesigning so that you can get that extra bedroom because the, the values have got certain parameters. You know, two bedrooms sell for this range. You can be at the bottom of that range or the top of the range. Three bedrooms sell for this range. Bottom of the range, top of the range. So taking something from a bottom of the range to the top of the range, you know, to the next range, sorry, you, you can make money out of that. So and that's basically what you did with the new build concept design. Yeah. Well, well, next step is actually because that area is growing again in Sydney because it's only six kilometres from the CBD. Yep. We're now wanting to put a DA to put a second level with an extra bathroom, an extra bedroom and a little study. Yep. Um, a little study because our next door neighbour is putting a DA to put two new houses and demolish a house. So we're going to do it at the same time. Okay. So that will add us extra... Capital. Yep. Um, so we built the house, we built it ready to be able to expand on, so we made sure yep. the footings are in there. Great. So we'll just keep expanding all the time. Yep. yep. Excellent. And it's only 180 square metres. Yes. Oof. Okay, so what have we got here? That's Did you do the construction process? Yep. We wanted to do it the cheapest possible way we could, so all the builders in that area, because it was inner city, chose charges like 300, 400,000. And then Amy went out west and found one that did it for about a hundred. Two two thirty in the end. Yeah. 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 Two thirty in the end were really extras that we wanted on it. We ten ten house. quotes or something we got for that one. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Ten, ten quotes. quotes. Yep. Because we didn't know anything about building cost. 
Um, so we really needed to get a range of different builders to quote the same design. And the quotes range from 170,000 to 430,000 for the same design and specs. Hmm. And that's where, again, you know, you've got to get the quotes. Just because you get a certain result one way, go a different way, change materials, lightweight materials, things like that you use to actually get that result. And design was more important than anything. That's Correct. Right. The value is value on bedrooms and bathrooms yep. and car yep. So the exterior doesn't really matter so much. If you can add a bedroom over having a different facade or double brick or something, you can do that type of thing. Now, that obviously tied you up for a considerable amount of time while you're building this. Like, you know, you're a year down the track. But what did you end up making? Some 450 odd grand out of that? Something? Yes, yes. Every year we just It's more now. We refine and refine. But that was really our biggest um, profit after we had done your course. Yeah. And we said, wow, we didn't expect that. We just wanted to build a house to live in in Sydney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the little old house in Naranda got you there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So during this build process, obviously you're getting out there finding deals, uh, but you can't do them because all your money's tied up in your house. Yes. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, we learned about joint ventures from you, and we said, okay, well, let's start looking at different deals, and we did the green analysis and went, um, you know, over Sydney, and then by this time we'd got to Brisbane, yep. um, and, you know, our first strategy was block on one side, a house on one side of the block, and then a spare block, and Same then... As Same as Miranda. Same as Miranda. Probably that in a more expensive place. It popped up again, similar sort of deal, yep. house on one side, and we did the fees on it, it looked like it made good profit. Um, we actually didn't have to move the house at all. We could just simply subdivide. So we sent an email out to some of the students mm -hmm. and um, got a few calls back. Yep. And, um, yeah, we went with JV Partner mm -hmm. and this deal was done, I think, in about 15 months or something. Yeah. I remember this. You know, this was so exciting. Yeah. And we, we've been really sure that this was going to work and we were able to prove to our JV Partner that the land had value. Hmm. So it doesn't really matter so much about the house. We, we were doing the background research to try and prove to ourselves and prove to our JV partner that, look, if we could subdivide, just pull off the land, we weren't going to go... We were going to make... Profit. It was worth more regardless whether you build on it or not. Yeah. 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 But you did decide to actually uh, build on that property? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's the reno of the initial place. That was a quick reno we did. And um, we actually... You know, managed most of it over the phone and emails from Sydney, mm -hmm. and we flew up there a couple of times. Um, and before we'd pay the builder, we'd make sure he sent us photos of the works completed, um, because I couldn't go there every day to check on the completed works. You're still working both of you at this stage? Yes, full time. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, you decided to go ahead with the joint venture partner and actually build the second house. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So there's our JV partner there. Now that JV partner's in the room. Somewhere. So doing her own stuff there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she is. Oh. Okay. So, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what you say, Jason. <laughs> Good man. That's a good man. You remember that day, don't you? Fantastic. Look at the smiles. Okay, so money on that one. What do we make on that one? I think we made like 180000 and we split the profit on those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it goes to now that worked well, so you, you know you did another JV with the same joint venture partner? Yes. Yeah? So what happened stage, here? One big thing was that doing a JV with someone, uh, we're the workers, they're the money partners, but we're still educating them the whole way through what we're doing. Yep. So they're learning just as much as us and all the steps and hurdles that we're getting through. Um, so really similar time to when that one's going on, we found this one, negotiated this at auction, and we could tell that this house would be taken off and it was worth more with the house, not on the land. Mm. Just as an empty block of land in two titles. So yep. that's what we did. So the, uh, you actually then did remove the house, or had the house removed? So at this stage, we removed the house, got all that done, and then you know, we looked at our JV partner and said, you, you know what to do now, you want to take over and do it? And said, yeah, great. So that's where she took over the second photo. Okay. Oh, come back one. Yep. So and, then, yes. and then built two new houses on it. Yeah. Well, actually, she sold one of them, didn't she? She, she sold, sold, all she sold one to a friend, and I think they both kept oh, it. Keep in the family. Okay, very good. I'd like say, very ancestral. Um. <laughs> we only want to deal with people within this so group. So, Reggie hated. How hard is it to tell someone that that's possible out in the group? 
That's right. That's exactly. And about the structures and how they're protected and all that sort of thing. And like, you know, if you're dealing outside the group, it's a much bigger education curve to get them up. Yeah. Yeah. So then what? So you're still building your house at this stage, not quite finished? You're still finding stuff. Still finding stuff, so what have we done here? So another journey partner came along, another student from your course, and they were up in Sunshine Coast, very, very busy jobs, and then we found something that this guy used to call shivers. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that? <laughs> did. So, but we didn't, didn't call it that. We got the mindset change. Yep. You introduced us to someone and we're like, oh, mm. so, we so we called it our gold mine. <laughs> so we said every time we talk about this, we're calling it a gold mine, okay, Tony? Mm -hmm. And then all the tradies and that, and even Ian, one of our plumber tradies, our cockroach exterminator. <laughs> uh, that was, I what do we call it? We said, we'll meet you at the gold mine. Yeah. So, uh, you, that was your last um, plumbing job. You got Ian on down there? Yeah, I haven't got a voice. Ian is the best plumber in the world, <laughs> so we hired uh, him. Okay, yeah. hey, sorry, best ex plumber. Best ex plumber. plumber. What happened, Ian? That was my last job as a plumber. Um, Did our job turn you off? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I had left Hyper at that stage, so I'd gone full time in investment, investing, and I got a call from them. They said, oh, come and have a look at it. I said, all right. So um, I went in there and, and we worked pretty quickly in this one. We got through and I was there one afternoon, it was six o'clock going dark and someone had hit the water meter, it had run over the water meter, but it hadn't cracked it, it had just bent it over. And they said, oh, you know, could you just put it, and I go, I'm not touching it because I know what will happen, right? So I go along and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I bent it enough to get it, try and get it straight and of course the copper gave way and the pipe snapped That's on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> and it snapped on the main side, so I couldn't turn it off, right? And there was a Telstra box right next to it, and so it filled the Telstra box up full of water, and all the cockroaches came out, uh. falling all over the top of me. So I had to smash the pipe together to stop it leaking and come back the next day, because they wanted the water meter moved in, so That's I moved perfect. the water meter, right? So, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> So that was my last job, um, technically as a plumber, and um, gladly retired. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you make on that one? Around 80 grand or something or other? I mean, the figures, this is where, you know, you look at the figures and go, wow, you know, you got it from 519 to 785, that's a great uplift. But the problem was around 80, wasn't it? Because there's costs and other things in there. Yeah, and Jason didn't paint this one. We actually delegated and got the trades team to do it all. So we could, we could renovate really quickly on this one. So this is a joint venture. Um, an ultimate, uh, uh, um, com someone in the community that had the money to buy the deal and Jason and Amy just project managed. And yep. you know, it took them six weeks. Wow. So we completely changed the whole feel of it. Um, it was like a 1930s original house. It had foam padded tiled ceilings. It had newspaper after newspaper underneath the lino. The main thing was, you know, we, this is our strategy, our same strategy today. Do research, find out what other other products are on the market, find the ugly duckling on the street, yep. find out what the most what the average or house will sell for. And we knew that was 780 on that street. Cheapest on that street was 750, so we've wow. been selling up for 519. Yep. What do we need to do to get it to that same look as the ones that are selling for that? And that's where Amy comes in and designs a whole lot to look exactly like the other houses. So we added a we added a bedroom. Yep. So we added, added a bedroom on that one. Yep. We added a bedroom. We opened up the kitchen. Um, did some plumbing. <laughs> did some plumbing for us. <laughs> um, and the people that bought that property. Uh, we now have seen it in a property yeah. magazine. Yeah. Really? Well. Yes. Nice. With that talking about, about the property. Yes. Okay. Seven eighty five. They bought it for. Yep. Now it's worth like one point two. And this is this is the one where um, Jason's. You know, I do it. Jason does it. We go and have a look at the agents list at the day that they go for the open inspections, and we Google names and find out stuff on social media. So here's the person that's looking at buying it on Facebook with an open page saying, how fantastic is this place? I really want to do stuff with it, right? Um, and so Jason's watching this going, well, this person's in love with our house. We sort of know where they're going to go to. Crazy. Well, yeah, agent told me his name, so I typed it into Facebook and bang, he comes up talking to all his friends about this house. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew it was a deal. <laughs> he loved it.
Okay, okay so, so that gave you, that was just on the side, you know, happening with uh, your joint venture partner as well. Then your place finishes, yes. your revalue, and now we're at a stage where um, you're ready for your next deal on your own. Yes. yes. And that was this deal here, which was a dual lot single title. You seem to see the same thing happen again. That was your strategy. Dual lot, single title. Dual lot, this one had two titles, we actually found out. Actually, two. It wasn't even on two yeah. lots. Okay. Yes, already two lots. Um, this was came up on our realestate.com alerts. Yep. And I just skimmed through that. If you know suburbs you're looking at, mm -hmm. just set your suburbs in there. You can get daily or weekly alerts. And um, found it, looked at a house on one side, a little driveway next to it. This was only... Nine metre frontage combined. I said to Jace, um, "Can you just go investigate? Drive down, call the agent." Mm -hmm. And um, Jace is great at negotiations, so. So, it had an auction sign on it, and it said going to auction on the Saturday. So we saw it over the weekend, right? Yes, Tuesday. I think we saw it. Tuesday. Yep. So on Wednesday, I say to the agent, "Can I meet you down there?" And he goes, "Oh, mate, you know." Oh, this is just an old thing. I don't really want to show you. Let's just wait till the weekend, all right? You know. And so uh, I said, "Look, I, I'm only in town for a week. That's what I always say, because I spent a lot of time in Queensland, and then with my parents coming back and forth, and I actually had to go back to Queensland next week. So I said, I'm only here for a week, but I'm ready to buy. I'm a builder. I'm, I, I want to renovate the whole thing. And a builder who paints with a one-inch paintbrush. Bruce is bloody good. You must be a really good actor too. Thank you, Sayna. How are you doing? It's beautiful. <laughs> Every little crack's filled. Um, and so what happened from there was I actually went and knocked on the door of the place. Because yep. instead of being rented, there's some students in there and I went in there and made friends with the students and I went and walked through the whole place with them. Uh -huh. you know? And then um, after that on the Wednesday I said, oh, come on, I need to come down. You know, come down because I'm about to go. So I finally got in there. Meet me at the pub. You want to meet, meet me at the pub up the road? So, you know, give you the keys. So I'll be at the pub, go and have a look and come back. Like, great agent. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> I love this agent, mate. He is a great agent. <laughs> Best buy of my life. And so, what happened is, um, yeah, so Wednesday comes and I give the keys back to him and go, okay, I'm buying it. And he goes, oh, we're we, we going to auction. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't have time. I told you one week. I've got to go back. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen something else around the corner. But I just like the look of this place. And so, um, so I said, give me the contract. So he gave me the contract. I put a price on it. And he said, we went back and I found out all the details of the owner that was selling it because you get the contract in New South Wales, sometimes you're the owner. Went back and found out that it was a semi-deceased estate. Does anyone here know what a semi-deceased estate is? <laughs> One guy, not the other. It's not a <laughs> Is the brush in the course now? No. <laughs> So one died, not the other. Yeah, so that means one of the partners dies and the mm -hmm. other one goes, oh, the other one we're left with, let's just get rid of it all and go to Vegas. Go to Vegas. <laughs> so uh, they, you've got the property prior to auction, basically. My job as Amy, I'm going to forget, it's pretty good, you know, Jason, <laughs> get that property before Saturday because on Saturday uh -huh. all the builders and renovators and Ian mm -hmm. and everyone's going to come along and buy it. <laughs> right. <laughs> But that's what it's like, you know. Um, we knew that was a definite. We, we'd done our title search and it was, it was a goer. Um, so my strategy then was whatever I had to do, just take it off the market. And so we did. So I had to exchange contracts, drive back and forth to the solicitors, put the deposit in because else I'd be gazumped. Mm -hmm. so, because it was New South Wales. Because it was New South Wales. So yep. make sure each solicitor signed off on it. Yep, it was done. And then on Saturday... The, uh, the builders all came on and sold. <laughs> it's already sold. Okay, so you bought it. Obviously, you needed a little bit of a renovation. Um, we were which, bad, is, you? which you can see that you, you've painted on the other side there. And ultimately, you went ahead and built on the vacant block of land. Yeah, which yeah. we didn't say we could do. And we said, oh, no, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Okay, so that, that gave you a decent uplift, obviously. That gave you, gave you more money, but it took a little bit of time. So well, This is how it worked. We didn't have the money quite to build that other house. Yeah. So then we reno the existing one, Yeah. Mm -hmm. make it that colour like it is now, get it revalued, take out the equity for that to make the house on the next block. Okay. And that's, that's an important lesson too, that, you know, these guys are just starting out at this stage, so they don't, they're not flush with funds. They've got enough to get into it, but they actually needed an uplift halfway through to get to the next stage. 
So if that's what you've got to do, then that's what you've got to do. I mean, it's not ideal because a lot of that renovation was useless. Well, not useless, mm -hmm. but it wasn't efficient. Um, it would have been better to do it all in one hit, but if you can't finance it all in one hit, you can't do it. So you've got to do what you can, and that was a revalve halfway through. Very good. So that gave you enough, um, that's going on, but in the meantime, obviously, you've got other, other money to go and do the so next thing. So that shows that we did there's an empty block. You can yep. see now there's two, two places on there. So those, those so what's this one here? That's uh, well, the top view. So what that shows is the slide on one side shows the empty block of land. So you see green roof, empty block of land. Yep. And then the next slide shows it, the house built on it. Green roof with the white roof. Yep. The green, the white roof. Yep. yep. Okay. That's it. Keep going. Very good. And this was the internals. Yep. So it yep. shows how we did bring that value up in that first one that, that we had. Okay. So this is all Amy's techniques. We've learned a lot of renovating from some of the other people and Platinum shared with us and Ian, especially fantastic renovator. So we copied most of his stuff. Mm -hmm. you, and we kind of, you know, you got mates in the market, you talk about it, you know, so you say, oh, well, this is the price I found. Ian, can you get any better? You know, so. And that's the new build there. Very good. Okay. That's the new build. Yeah. Internals as well. Yeah. You can see here Amy's clearly got a, a nice flair for colours and design and, and everything. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> Amy actually designs furniture as well. She, um, in her prior life and probably still now as a hobby on the side, do you? You design yeah, furniture? Yeah, I do. I love, I love designing. That's a hobby and passion. Yeah. And um, now I get to put that design element into houses, which is even better. You've actually got a world-famous design chair that sells across the world. Yes, I've got a great manufacturer in Shanghai and they make, I made these stools that are functional as a table, um, a bench or stool, and it sells in Dubai, in China, Singapore, so it's really satisfying to see that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that was the interior design. This was another quick flick along the way. Do one for, every year we've done one for ourselves and two JVs at the same time. Because okay. we thought, we've got all this knowledge, why let it go to waste? And I think that's what a lot of time but when I talk to people getting started, I've been doing it for eight years now, I've been to a lot of these conferences, and they give me their situation. And even recently I'm mentoring a guy that, you know, the money's not there at the moment, but all this education, mm -hmm. so you've got a JV. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yep, absolutely. So, so there's the, um, there it is from one side to the other. Let's, so that's another JV, obviously, you know, internal. And the thing with these little ones like this is, there's not that much to do. No. I mean, they're only so no. big. There's little techniques like we've done there. So these are things that Ian taught us and we went through all these different techniques to really boost it. And you can see there what we put there, changing it to horizontal makes it look bigger. Yep. Except Ian, you know, it's So they're good. quick cosmetic renos, about seven to ten weeks, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. so, so uh, yeah, let's do another JV. So there's another one there, floated backyard. So it's another thing to open it up to try to get that floated backyard, add some value. Yeah. Uh, another one, archways. Ian taught us this. Ian's a master of turning archways into rectangular columns. <laughs> <laughs> I had to grow, grow up with arches in my home. <laughs> so it gives me great pleasure to square them up. <laughs> so there was the giving back stage. This is when, this is when, I mean, you tell them about it, your parents at the beginning were like, why are you going out to... Why are you going out to Naranja and spending all this money and getting into all this debt, you know? And then a couple of years later they saw we were actually making profit and said, okay, well, here's some money or can you do something with our house? <laughs> and my mum... they turn around like that. <laughs> yeah. And now they're like, oh, can we do bigger stuff now? So, yeah, mum had been living in a really old, uh, traditional wooden timber brick house and I said to them, look, let's market's moving in Sydney, let's see if we can, you know, uplift the house and get some more equity for you. Mm -hmm. So... We got them packed up, put all their furniture in storage, and we said, look, you go overseas for three months. So they went to Hong Kong, stayed with relatives, and Jason and I project managed uh, this cosmetic reno in seven weeks. We were there every day, yeah, from seven, from seven to seven. Um, and then that project managed uh, You know, love your parents, obviously. Yeah. This is your gift back to them. Yep. Yeah, let's mom, let's mom improve cried. it. Sorry? Her mum cried. Uh, yeah, and she, I was like, you know, do you have a preference for colours? She's like, oh, yeah, we'll have this, this. I said, actually, leave it to me. <laughs> she wanted so red and gold, didn't she? And then she walked through. <laughs> every, every room had a different wall colour. She had a, 
hang, aqua, blue, yellow. Oh, no. um, and when she came back, she's like, they were the colours I was going for. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so there are some of the, uh, the works along the way, are they? Yeah. Yes. We did our celebration dinner with my parents and her parents. Yeah. Oh. So that's what they owed us a dinner. That was a deal. 100 grand for dinner. 100 grand for dinner. Very good. So what's this one here? So we were looking for deals again in Sydney and we came along this great, you know, block. Um, I had DA approval for two Torrance title, like freehold houses. And um, we actually bought this off a um, politician at the time. We signed an agreement back then. Where we went back then we signed an agreement. We divorced. 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 So they've so so done a lot of plans for the you know, way to and make lots of money in divorce and then negotiated with him to yeah, get out of it. But the good thing was the water meter was broken there, it was spewing out water. And was Ian right? there again? Huh? Was Ian there again? No. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> but he just had to make one phone call. Yep. And bang the council came out and fixed it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is probably one of our best deals from the point of view that we like to give back a lot. So... Every deal that we do, we get a percentage and we'll, we'll help someone else out. That's, I was brought up like that and that's what we do. But with this one here, it was a double whammy. Because what happened was that uh, when, when we built it and then we did it as a JV and then we sold it, we made a good chunk of money for ourselves. And then because it was such a luxurious, beautiful property, over six months we negotiated with Boys Town. Does everyone know what Boys Town is? It's a lottery, you know, get a lottery, just almost like dip a sink here, give away a house. <laughs> And, and so they, the guy flies up, walks through the whole place, and then you can just see him, his eyes opening, going, people are going to fall in love with that, they're going to buy tickets. So they made like $4 million out of ticket sales profit. Right. And then we made our profit and walked away with that one too. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So by this stage, you know, you started off doing little deals, you did some renos, you've done some building of single houses... This was the first duplex that you'd actually built? I do remember the day, and Kevin, is Kevin in the room? Kevin Doodney? Not okay, yet. Well, you'll see him later, he's been around. We was sitting outside that conference and we really had to have this moment where we needed some advice from you, from Kevin, from other people. And Kevin said to us, what are you guys doing? You've got to take it up another level. Yeah. Remember that? Yes, yeah. he, he really sat us down with that moment thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, but the journey is part of it as well. Yes. You know, if you've never done it before, I mean, we imagine want to going jump up into the block deal. floor and he's painting the thing with a one-inch paint yes. brush. You know? yes. So, yes. So this is where the journey has to, to, to take place. And, Correct. You know, you started really meagre and you're building up, building up, building up. So the next one is we need to do a bigger development. You might have gone really big, but anyway, let's let's go. Let's so, go. Um, one of the um, you know the the uh, guys who I recommend as a great educator for you know taking it to the next level for development is actually Bob Anderson. So you took that on board and went and saw Bob. Yeah, well, we had the opportunity. So suddenly there's my dad and then his mate, and he said, I've got this big block of land. I heard what you guys have been doing. I've been following uh, what you've been doing. Your dad's been telling me, how about you, you do a JV with me and go put some, uh, some unit blocks on this or something like that. So that's exactly where we needed to take the next level. And you know what? Get re-educated. Okay. So how many can you fit on here? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you next week. What happened is we, we go up there. We pack up, we move up there, uh, we, we're, we're about to start negotiations on this, um, we start, there's your, your first plans, plans A, mm -hmm. and then it gets rezoned to about, like, halfway through it gets rezoned. To 15 levels currently, but now we're looking at 20 levels because it keeps wow. changing the zoning and the owners are like, well, let's just keep waiting a bit and they own the land outright, so there's no rush on it. So we didn't rush them into doing those units. We yep. said, it's, look, your best bet here by what we know is to just wait for the zoning to keep changing, keep changing. And that's continually meetings with councils and keeping up to date with things to make right. sure it's happening. Yeah. And the owner of the property, because this is a seller JV deal. Yes. yes. They own the property, they trust you to, to do what you're going to do with it and there'll be a DA approval and you'll probably sell it at DA Stage. Correct. They might make even more money just selling it with the DA rather than building it now. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, so that's a wait and see. That all comes down to numbers. What do the numbers say? Where's the feasibility? Which one's going to be a uh, bit more beneficial, basically? Yeah? yeah? So we've been given a small retainer from that, but we weren't obviously going to go ahead and do it straight away. So Good. Then we thought, well, we have to. We've got all this knowledge now. We know how to do it. We've done the course. And now you've moved to Brisbane, so you've got to do some up there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So what do we find? So um, our strategy was let's get all our JV partners together, say, look, we know what we're doing here, this is our strategy, we've been able to find out which blocks work, the exact square meterage, where, where townhouses are, are going to work, what type of design. A, a lot of, there's a lot of homework in development, probably Try four it. times as much. Yep. Um, mainly Amy did 90% of it and I went and got the deal, so she's my background girl. Yeah, this one we actually just finished about two months ago, the right. build, mm -hmm. and we'd finish, so 18 months project from start to finish, um, settlement to settlement, and basically we built, we've got a block, two old houses on it, got a DA approval to build nine townhouses on it, and at that time we weren't sure whether we could do nine, might have been seven to nine. Um, but with a smart architect and a good team around you, which is really important to have your A-team, uh, we were able to get nine approved. Mm -hmm. And we actually got um, conditions in there at the time subject to DA approval Great. for six months. So the holding cost wasn't two years, it was only 18 months. Yeah. And, um, yep, finished, sold, pre-sold before they were and built. And a lot of these deals were finding through investor as well. I use a whole lot of different tools. People say, what tools do you do? And I go, well... I'm making a lot of profit out of these deals. I want to have the maximum amount of tools I can. Totally. So that helped us out a lot. And again, this one, JV, Ultimate Studio. Yep. Yeah. So this one, we actually just finished the calculations on it. And um, it's actually just over a million in profit yeah. in 18 months. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So can you imagine? <laughs> it's a real aha moment to us when, when we go, how many years would have I had to work? <laughs> Or get bonuses in your corporate job. Now, in the early stages, I remember as a bit of motivation for you and a bit of you know, psychological stuff. You used to put my picture on the fridge and put sayings out of my mouth. Does that still happen? Well, you used to say, great deal, guys. It's <laughs> still there. Our fridge has about 10 of those statements. So yeah. There's so many deals going. <laughs> so, you know, we have learned a lot about manifestation and putting it out there and visualisation, which we encourage everyone to do because whatever we dream or visualise, we actually think bigger. So we'll put that property deal on a fridge magnet and say, finish by this time, profit in this time. And I said, Jace, that's not the right profit. He's like, Amy, you've got to think big, not realistic. <laughs> and they've been close to the yep. bigger results. So okay. it's amazing. Yeah. Well, if you put like, if we put, we've just made 800,000 profit on that. I mean, this is just our vision, right? Yep. But I said, no, scrub that off. I mean, let's put, you know, one million on that. Yep. Let's see what happens. And that's exactly what happened then. Yeah. So aim bigger. So the problem with that was that all the platinum started using your fridge and they ran out of fridge now. <laughs> you actually produced little little stickers if it ready to put my picture in, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That ended them out of platinum. <laughs> okay, so another JV deal going at the same time? Yeah, so you know it's it's about we're up there, we know what we're doing, we're finding the sites. We're pretty much, we're almost in this semi-retirement stage, right? Because we don't need jobs, we've got income coming in, we bought the right properties, we, we did the right tactics, we're very, how do I say this, you know, our portfolio, we look after it. And we make sure that it's taking care of us, not tomorrow, but three years' time. Yep. So that's how we, how we work it, even with our mortgage broker, we've got to make sure that what do we have to do the next year to get this amount of money to move on to that next step. Um, so this is a so we're up there. We did four deals in the, in this one time frame. So this was another deal here. Um, so it's it's a four pack. Everyone had done three packs. We did a four pack. Um, so there, you know, you get pre sales. They'll be sold, and we just got a feasibility profit in there for that one. So that one's not completed yet. The other one was obviously. That's this one here's not completed. completed yet, yet. And you had another one going at the same time. Yep. yep. So this one here is Adam in the room. Who's Adam? There's, look at the back there. Stand up, family. Where's Adam? The whole, the whole family. There he is. Boys. <laughs> so Adam and his family. 
doing that with us, and we're about to finish construction about four weeks maximum. And, and great JV we've actually so sold three, and we've only got one left. Um, so, yeah, that should pull out a good, healthy profit as well. Our JV partners are very, um, very in line and very spiritual as well, like us. So we ask them to visualise it too. We ask them to put it on your fridge as well. It's on your fridge? Yeah. Yeah, it's up there. So that's part of our thing. The people that we're working with, just, it's not just about money. No. It's about we want to share the experience, teach them, and we need them to be at the same energy level as us. So this one here is another one that you're doing at the same time? Yeah, number five pack. So this is one that we kept for ourselves, and um, we've got different ways that we finance that with other partners as well. But. Mm -hmm. This is, this is our own little one. Round so, the again, two or three on the side and one for yourself every year. Yeah, and this one should finish in about a nice time as well. Okay, yeah. and the profit on that one between four and five. Yep. 100,000. Yeah. So, what does that put your profit at then for the year? It's over a million. Yeah. Aren't you going to love paying that tax bill? We've worked on that out. You're going to help us with that one. <laughs> we sat down with this load of accounting and they knew mm -hmm. right from the start. And yep. we've updated them the whole time. Amy yep. had a great time two days ago doing all the yes. tax returns and that. Yep. Good. You need that advice. Now you're up to date. You're not five years behind like you were when you started. Oh. No, definitely. From <laughs> as soon as we <laughs> met you, he's up to date. Yep. <laughs> Very good. So there's the um, you know, Brisbane Delta from one side to the other and what you can actually do there. So What's this made 70000 a year? Oh, well, that was in the first year we started with you. That's where we started. So we just oh, on the very first year, year. okay. So, the, so our first year, you know, we're making seventy thousand profit, and that was that was the equity. You know, that was our income from that year, and we were renovators back then. Mm -hmm. So we went from renovators to developers. Now our profits aim at being one million a year. So it's just that's where you evolve from. Yeah, you, you but the the evolution is an important stage, mm -hmm. I feel. There's the no way we could have done the there. bigger projects from the beginning because yeah. there were so many lessons that we learned oh, that totally. enable us to be, you know, the good property investors that we are now. Mm. Yeah. And that's in the space of, when did you join me? Well, eight years. Eight years ago. Eight years. Yeah. 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 But back then, $70,000 was a massive amount of money to you too. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. You don't want to forget yeah. that, you know? No. I yeah. still think it's amazing. So, what are you doing with this? You found wealth. Yep. So, this is, you know, not only changing our lives, but changing the lives of people around us. You know, like, you learn all this education, you can help yourself, you can help others out there, but, you know, we've kind of felt a need to, to help people within the family too and get them into it. So... Um, Amy's brother went and did the ultimate course and then together we negotiated with him to, uh, to buy a property. So there's a the brother there. Mm -hmm. um, the yep. next one there is the parents. Both parents are now doing JVs with us. So the thing that worried both our parents was that whole retirement thing, you know. It is still mm -hmm. worried. It doesn't even matter if they get a bit of money. They're never going to know what operations they know or what situation they're going to be in. Now both of them are set. Yeah. But they're not worried. They're still actually both working, but they're not worried about when they have to retire because there's always going to be a chunk of money there now for them. Mm -hmm. So, and the last one is a friend of mine that I helped um, boost up. So he wanted to buy an off-the-plane apartment, and I said, "Look, you're better off. I know how to do it. Buy a house down the road." Um, so we negotiated with him, and now that's gone from six fifty up to about eight fifty within the space of six months. So I know one of those ones there because the light rail went in and I knew it was going to happen. So it was a negotiation process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you want to talk about the last one there, Amy? Yep. Are you using the profits for a bit of charity? Yeah, so even from the very beginning when we were making like 20000 we'd always go, okay, well, let's put a little bit amount to support someone in need and not to any big charities, but it'd be, you know, someone in the country town and the mother had a little tinny box in the pub and they needed to buy a lung compressor for the son and okay. we just said, okay, we'll contact her and donate $1,000 and she was like crying on the phone. So little things like that and we have a Fiji village we support where we help them build rainwater tanks, paint their church. Um, you know, we don't need receipts or anything. It's just about giving back and being part of the community. Yeah, just go back from the 
Philippines. Um, just got back from the Philippines and there's an orphanage castle that we want to help them build over there. Yeah. So those are the things. So in our actual, it's funny when our account looks at it and goes, hang on, look, in that uh, spreadsheet, what's this here? Funds for other people. In the spreadsheets, that's our percentage that we kind of say, okay, we make this, that's what goes there. So. Yeah, so the more we give back, you know, it flows, and we'd love to be able to do that now. We and can. And support a lot of kids around the place too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Every place we hold it, we find a kid too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we find somewhere and then go talk to an orphanage, and they normally they've got sponsorship, but they don't have, the, like, dental, or they yeah. might need an operation or something, so that's where we might be able to help with that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. JV Partners? Yeah, so our greatest skills we find through this course is... Um, you know, one of the biggest things we've learned is not only just doing JVs, but how do you make that partnership work the best? Mm -hmm. And that means taking care of yourself, obviously, but taking care of them, realising that they're an important part to your future as well. And so we self audit ourselves to make sure that they're in touch with staff and we make sure that um, at the end of the day, we're doing the best we can. Yep. Yep. So. And so the course, the... the um the cost of the, of the the projects, you know, doing your feasibility studies, very important, your due diligence, etc. Yeah. Yeah, Amy, you want to talk about the negotiations? Yeah, look, I think with any deal, it's all about due diligence research and knowing your area. So every suburb we go into, we'll get to know the trades, the architects, the council, um, the builders, and really build that solid team because they're the one going to help you with the project and make you the most max amount of profit. So it takes a bit of time to get to know an area. That's why we don't go all around Australia. We get we spend three months in the suburb and get to know all the consultants, builders, council and the streets. Yep. And that's why we've become some very, of the experts. Very, very wise. Yeah. Yeah. Real estate agents, I mean, I'm a... give myself a big head here. I'm a fantastic researcher. And even with the real, real estate agents now... Before, when they're just seeing a property and they're negotiating with the owners, they'll give me a call and they'll go, Jason, can you do all the due diligence on this for us? Tell us what it's worth. And so they won't even list the property. I'll do all the research and then I'll tell them, I'll tell them what I think I can, what I would pay for it yep. and give them all my research. Mm -hmm. And I say, give me, give me two weeks. If the owners are happy with that price, great. If they're not happy, then you've now got all the research you can go and sell it on to someone else, mm -hmm. so. Good. Yeah. Okay, and so what's next for you guys? Um, <laughs> I'm having a baby in seven so weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is our future here, babies, uh, babies, see, babies. Um, <laughs> we've got this beautiful system now, don't we, Amy? Oh, well. Yeah, we do. We've got a great team of people who work with us. We've got great clients, and it's about just having that right group of people, building the business up, helping everybody around us make wealth, mm -hmm. and um, inspiring others to do the same with property too, especially younger people. Yep. Start earlier. Um, and, yeah, just we love, we love what we do. And what do you say about success? I, this is my, my thing. When um, I have a lot of people... Um, say to me, you know, oh, you're just lucky, or oh, you a whole heap of money, you know, must have, you know, got it from your parents or something like that. And I go, no, well, actually, uh, success to me is a reward for the choices you make. So that's why I say to people, my success has only come through choices. So you being in this room today is a choice that you made that someone else didn't make. So when you think about the successful people, you can all go back and go, at some point, they made certain choices. It just didn't happen. It just doesn't bang happen. So. Absolutely. And, and the more information you have around anything, the better choices you make. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's been a progressive thing for you guys, too. And, you know, your, your journey and your properties and everything shows that. You know, from the, the little cheapy out west, made 70 grand, and back then, 70 grand was a huge amount of money for you guys, yeah. to now earning over a million dollars a year. You know, yeah. from, from what you're doing and stuff. Isn't that fabulous? Give these guys a huge round of applause. Thank you. Oh, I didn't want to say that 
these two are amazing people. Jason, when you see a lot of our slides, a lot of the research comes from Jason and he gives of his heart and his soul um, for nothing in return. It's completely unconditional what he does. And Amy, for what she does, working with in Platinum, working students and helping them out, um, is just an amazing, amazing. I love you both. Thank you. <laughs> And a big thank, you. <laughs> big thank you to Dipna and Ian as well, you know, this is a family, a community of people here, and get to know one another and support each other because in the property industry, you've got to come along challenges and hurdles. It's about working together and, you know, meet like-minded people and we're around positive people all the time and that helps us on our property journey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you again. Thank <laughs> you.